So here's the top four match against Silver Beanie. He's running the Imperial Star deck. Well, of course, I'm rocking my Centaur Star deck, and I get to go first. And I get a really good start here with Sprout at five defense, really helping me kind of set the pace here, as the Imperial deck will definitely have a bit of trouble hitting over the Sprout, and will have to commit quite a bit to be able to do so. Really, I think the best out will be like Thunderbolt on a four attacker, or just having to Zeus it. So let's see what uh, Silver here ends up doing. So I just set one, pass the turn, and he starts out with... Just two spirits, I believe it's a Nog. Yep, it is a Nog. So, drawn two, good start for him as well, just kind of getting ahead on card advantage. And here, I'm not feeling too bad. I feel like I have a really good matchup against the Imperial starter deck, just because my Elestials naturally hit higher attack. And like here, uses an Astrabbit here just to continue to search. So, and really great to kind of set up his hand to do stuff, but it's really hard because this version of the Imperial deck, as opposed to the starter deck now, that's been officially revealed on the website really does lack a little in the control aspect that it goes for but still being able to grab that spark is definitely one of his more powerful cards so be able to do good things with that and he sets two and passes to me so on my turn here i use earthquake to get the astrobit figuring that if it's a face down rather just kind of grab the tempo here and still be up in elastral instead of risking like having to get over it. and plus it lets me commit less on top of it because I only have the Sprouter. So really, if I hadn't used the Earthquake there, I could have pumped up one Sprouter with, I believe, I'm pretty sure I had a Dever in my hand. So I could have pumped it up or even used the Scythe I just searched. I have two in hand at this point. Uh, I could have pumped up one of the Sprouters, but I really didn't want to run into a counter in here when I can just Earthquake it and deal with it anyway. So here I just attack and the two attacks go through, though he checked a face down there, so that might be something I need to be wary of in the future. And even more reason why I wanted to do it this way. So here, uh, face down, I believe, is just a bluff, but I have secured, I've set the tempo here. I've got two Sprouters on board. My opponent has just the two face downs. So looking pretty good here just to, at this point, I just kind of want to control what my opponent does and not let him get ahead of me from here. Just kind of keep it at that. At least I'm two Elestrals up and I eventually should just win if I can maintain it. So Spark it is thrown out here. It can easily attack over one of the Sprouters. So not too bad there, but I was expecting, I knew that he had it. And just throwing out the Sprouter there was just, I knew that eventually was going to be tacked over, but now I can save my higher attack stuff to then attack over the Spark Kit as well. So kind of try to bait him out using his stronger answers before I go into my stronger ones as well. That way I can do more. So it does send up the Mount Olympus here. Not necessarily for Spark Kit to hit over the Sprouters, but still makes it a bit harder for me to hit over. I might have to use the Scythe, and, or at least a Force. So he does hit over. It does not actually spark its effect, which is quite nice as well, which is part of the reason I didn't want to commit more from hand, because I just wanted to have more cards, more kind of fluff in hand to kind of stall out my opponent. So I throw out Rummage Gem here, get another great search, so I could just grab another threat. Equal links here, great to start dealing with the runes on the board if I deem necessary. Have my eye on that back row. If he doesn't use it, I can definitely do it. And I do have the Forest here. So that just allows me to the easiest way to get Rum Gem to attack over Spark it since it is only at four attack now while Rum Gem's at five. So he does end up using the counter room by the looks of it here. Yep. And it is a shield, which is partially to be expected. And of course, I can just crash Sprouter into Spark it. And I'm debating this right here. But ultimately, I end up doing it because the thought process is that I would rather get rid of the Spark Hit, even though I'm losing a bit of tempo on here. Because the alternative was I give him a chance to allow Spark Hit to attack over the Sprouter. So now I'm out the Sprouter, he still has the Spark Hit when I can just get rid of the Spark Hit to begin with. It just puts me in a bit of a better situation here overall. And I still have the equal links in hand for some rune destruction. And I still actually have a pretty big hand overall. So not I wasn't my favorite play here, but at the same time, it was good enough for me as I I felt like I dealt with the board, got rid of the shield, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. And if he tries to send another one, of course, I still have my uh, still have the equal links to try to do something. I've got four second next off of I got two sides of hand. Well, I say I have a scythe between either the hand, two sides between hand and face down. So it does peak us to my stadium here. A bit unfortunate. So I lose on Nexus target, but again, I still have Nexus targets here. And throwing peak gust in defense here. So not really trying to grab attack my spirit deck here, which is fine because I can easily attack over it. If I want to get rid of that face down, I can with equal links. But here I just decide to rum a gem again, figuring that sh since he didn't really look at it, I'm not too worried about that face down here. I kind of just want to run over the P gust, and rum a gem does that just fine here. So here I'd say this is a bit of a missed opportunity for my opponent to poke me for one, if more than likely I would attack over it anyway. 
So I, it really just allows me to stay ahead on the spirit wings on top of it, just kind of taking advantage of that play here. So my opponent does have another spark kit here. Now can't exactly attack over the Ramajem, so he's going to need to find another way to do so. And Thunderbolt does just that, while also forcing me to expend an extra spirit print, giving spark kit the necro effect. So spark kit is at six attack now and attacks over the Ramajem here. So, and then forcing me to expend one, but as it helps him catch up a little bit, but here I still have some great threats. I have the Tectoros last turn. I have sights in hand to kind of pump it up. I have equal links if I'm really worried about that face down. This is his, actually his second spark hit. So there isn't much he has left in his deck that can really hit high numbers. And I still have a lot of stuff that can hit high numbers. So I throw out the equal links here. Really, because my thought process here was, even though that, under, that face down doesn't look to be anything, I don't want to risk it either. So I did set the scythe, I equipped it onto equal links, and then Nexus onto the equal links to destroy that back row here. And he, first my opponent thinks it's Thunderbolt, but I actually say the back row because I can easily hit over with equal links regardless. So I set two spirits on a Demeter, uh, use Demeter's effect to pump equal links up to seven attack, hitting over Spark at six attack, while also dealing two damage. Now it was pointed out that an alternate play I would have done, this pointed out by Dan who was streaming at this point, that I could have left the scythe up on equal links and next put Demeter on three spirits next to the spirit to equal links, setting it to two, popping the back row, and still having scythe on equal links, pumping up equal links with Demeter to still and recover two spirits off of that. The reason I didn't do it here was I was up a good amount of spirits here, and I wasn't too worried about equal links being attacked over. It my thought process was it doesn't matter how high equal links' attack is, if he has the card to out it, it would out it even with scythe. So I'd rather just kind of put more pressure on my opponent here to try to close out the game because Equal Links is a huge threat right now, and I didn't really need the recovery here, and I still have a lot of answers on in my hand as well. So really, I'm just kind of putting my opponent in a position where they re they really need to answer the Equal Links here, and they might overextend using even more spirits, which will help me close out the game just a bit quicker. I mean, he's at five and I'm at seven. And I could have been up at 8, but I don't know. I just think this play, kind of putting the pressure on my opponent here to close out, is just so much better. I'm in such a commanding position. I mean, I have four spirits on board. And all my opponent can do is throw out a phony. That can stall for sure. But that definitely isn't a way to out equal link. So my risk there, because it wasn't definitely wasn't the safest play, but I think it was a very good risk to play and just kind of... And actually, it literally lets me make this play here. I go Sorlet, expend one to switch phony to attack. So that means I can deal damage with the equal links here, gain damage on their the spirit deck, so Fomi can't effectively stall it, which is super huge here. And here I'm just doing some math. My opponent has four spirits left. I just use the other side because I can nexus it onto equal links. And now when I hit over the Fomi, since it's in attack, it deals that four spirits of damage. And then uh, Fomi then can't use its effect to float, and so it can finish the game. And that that's where that risk really paid off. You can make the argument that if I'd gone for the safer play, like what Dan suggested, that I could have, uh, I still would have won, but at the same time, it just gave my opponent more time to draw outs here. And it was one of those risks where technically, if I got punished for it, it would have, I would have been more of a punish, but at the same time, I don't think it would have, I still would have set myself up for a victory a bit sooner, which overall was better. So really fun match there. That was kind of really showing off the power of Nexus and really understanding how powerful a tool it can be. And I think it was a little cheesy just kind of using the soul at the switch foamy to attack to just kind of hit over the top here. So a lot of fun shots to my opponent, Silver Beanie. Thank you for letting me record it. I had a blast playing and I hope we get to play again sometime soon. If you've been enjoying my commentary over my top cut matches, please consider leaving a like button, comment down below what your favorite moment from this match was. And of course, look forward to my uh, my commentary over the finals match against Jade Johnny coming out next. And make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you're notified when I upload that and any other Elastral's content. So look forward to that.